Today I'm going to be looking at my amplifier, the Sony TAFB940R. Got a few years ago, second hand off eBay. Um, uh, inspired by a, I think it was 720 or something um, that a friend got, and uh, after a while uh, developed a fault. I fixed that um, eventually. Um, the MOSFETs were were blown, and some other drivers. Um, anyway, I liked the amp and looked out for something similar. Got this one in silver, um, slightly higher model. So quite a nice amplifier, nice and powerful. Um, got a bunch of uh, tone controls and uh, things basically I don't use, to be honest. Uh, but it does have uh, two tape loops um, marked as DAT and MD. Uh, an AUGS input I use for the TV, um, CD input, tuner input, um, which is all very good since I have the mini disc um, CD tuner. Um, but you'll notice I have two other tape decks, I mean a DAT and a cassette deck. Um, so I'm missing one input um, and I have a phono input here that I don't use because I don't have a turntable. So I'm going to look at um, converting this phono input to another line level input. So this is the schematic, uh, rather small, um, I'm afraid. Um, so here are the normal line level inputs and they see a 1 meg impedance um, with a 100 picofarad capacitor there just to stop some high frequency um, interference I guess uh, and then they all go into the switching section. The phono input um, is obviously more complicated with its uh, equalization amplifier uh, at the moment so what I'm looking to do is instead of this input going into this um, long tail pair I will disconnect these um, so we can remove this resistor, remove that capacitor. Um, these two I can then um, remove, I guess I can make um, 100 picofarad equivalent from here to here um, and then maybe put the 1 meg into here so that would look like the inputs on the, um, the other line level inputs and then bridge a connection from here over to this point here which is the output of the amplifier. So we'll disconnect this resistor here R162 and uh, bridge over to here which then goes all the way around here to the actual connector um, and then off to the switching section. So that should uh, isolate the amplifier. I mean I could remove the power supply, go into it and turn off the um, the amplifier, but it, it won't take much current. I don't think I'll bother doing that, just on the off chance. Um, I want to put the circuit back, maybe if I sell the amplifier in the future or something. Um, I suppose I'll make the minimum changes necessary uh, for the moment. So yeah, let's take it apart and uh, see how easy it is to do that. So here we are with the top off, um, very nice clean design, um, big heat sinks, big transformer, big main capacitors, um, all very nice. Um, so the phono board there in the corner, so we've got a couple of screws at the back um, and one here which will need to come off and then that should allow us to take off that board, although since it's in that position um, well, some of it is accessible, but some of it probably it's hidden by this, so I'll, I'll probably take the board off, it'll be easier. So this is the end result. So the capacitors here are the 100 picofarads. Uh, shorted out these resistors that were there. This resistor is now 1 meg. And then these capacitors, the electrolytics that have been removed, the uh, positive end there is now uh, jumping over 
down to these ends here of these resistors that uh, were removed so it bypasses all of this circuit here so let's put it back in and see if that works satisfactorily okay there's the board in and well you'll have to trust me that uh, we're getting line output from the tape um, through the phono uh, there we go so all good hopefully that's useful if you want to do the same modification